Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Cory. Today I am doing the Look for Lush Challenge with Yami from the Latina Next Door. And for my challenge, I'm going to be recreating these lamps that I found online at Pottery Barn. I'm super into Pottery Barn right now, but not very into their prices. The pair of these lamps is $464. And these lamps I got from Goodwill for $6.99 a piece. They were in pretty ugly condition, but the shape in general was pretty similar to the Pottery Barn lamps that I wanted to recreate. It's not exactly the same, but it's close enough. And the price, you really can't beat $6.99 for a gigantic lamp like this. And the fact that they had a pair and I was looking for a pair was just amazing. And I just want to quickly say thank you so much to Yami for inviting me to co-host with her on this Look for Less Challenge this month. I will have her channel linked in the description box below, as well as the playlist to this challenge. So the first thing that I'm going to do is use some sandpaper. I'm just using 220 grit, although any fine grit sandpaper would work, and I'm hand sanding the finish. The person who owned these before they donated them, it seemed like they had tried to fix them up and gave up and then just donated it. And I feel like so many people can probably relate to that. Even I have done that where you have plans for a project and it just doesn't work out how you thought it would. These lamps had three different paint colors underneath the black that I found as I was sanding, which I thought was just really funny. And it was kind of neat to see that because it means that somebody fixed these up to suit their home and make them happy several times instead of buying new. So that's nice. And I'm painting them a whole nother color. So it just goes to show you that you don't have to take things to the dump. Things can be refigured and or sorry, reconfigured and repainted and just made beautiful to work for whoever is going to own them and make them happy for many years to come. Here's what it looks like after I did a light sanding on the whole piece. For the most part, there were no shiny spots anymore, so my next paint should stick really well. Now I'm just going to clean it with some uh, disinfectant wipes, and these are just the Walmart brand disinfectant wipes. I like to use these because it's disinfecting these since they're from the, the thrift store as well as getting off all of that dust and you can use several different pieces of the wipes so that way if one wipe gets really covered in that dust you just get a new one and it keeps you from just spreading that paint dust all over. Now I'm going to go over them with some flat white spray paint. I love this Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Coverage spray paint. Works amazing. I used about one can of spray paint for both of them, and usually I get my spray paint for about $3.50. So we started with $14 for the pair of lamps, and now we've added $3.50. And the original Pottery Barn lamps were shiny, so the flat paint is different from what they had but flat paint hides imperfections really well. So that is why I chose flat over the shiny finish. I just didn't think that shiny white or glossy white would have looked as good on these pieces. And that's something you need to think of when you are doing uh, high-end dupes like this is you still have to do what's right for the piece that you're fixing up. You want the end product to look good and sometimes doing it exactly like the original won't look as good on the piece that you're doing. It took me only two coats to get really good coverage on these lamps, and again, it was still just one can of spray paint for both of them. I'm just going to take some cotton balls and shove them down inside the area where you screw in the light bulb. I do this because when I'm going to be spray painting the top and the metal part, I don't want spray paint to get down inside that light bulb area because it will prevent the light bulb from making contact and then the lamp will no longer work and I'm going to be taping off the area that I'm going to be spray painting on the top so that way I have a nice crisp line around the top of the lamp and I will show you a quick look back at this area that I'm going to be painting just so you can kind of remember why I'm doing this and the paper that I'm using to cover the bottom part of the lamp is just packing paper that they give you when you buy fragile stuff at TJ Maxx or any of those kind of stores. I always keep that paper because it you'll use it in any of your crafting. I swear, I use it so much. Here's a look back at the area I was talking about. You see how there's like a dark, uh, like oil rubbed bronze color area on the top of the lamp? I'm trying to recreate that on this lamp. 
So I tape it first so that I can get a crisp line and then I go back and tape on the paper to prevent any overspray from getting on that white paint. Since it's white, any kind of overspray that I get on here would be really obvious. So I'm making sure to cover it really well and prevent all my hard work for being for nothing if I get that overspray on that white. Here's the paint that I picked out. It's a hammered, metally, dark, bronzy color. It doesn't have a color name on it that I could find, but this is a close-up of what it's supposed to look like. And it was about $5 for the can. So we had $14, then $3.50, and now $5. And I just covered the entire top part of the lamp in this paint, and I still had, like, the majority of the paint can left over. So if you really wanted to get picky about the, like, true cost of this, then I probably only used one dollar out of the five dollars this was that this spray paint can cost because I'm still going to be able to reuse that spray paint on several other projects. Once that's dry I brought it inside and I'm working on the bottom of the lamp area that had a darker toned kind of stone looking part and I'm just going to use some craft paint. Craft paint is about a dollar for two little containers about 50 cents a piece. I happen to have this chalk paint on hand already so I just used that but you could use any kind of craft paint and I just stippled it on there to get a good stone texture and then once I get it all the way around I use that other craft paint to create some dimension and depth of the color to make it really appear to be like a concrete or stone. So now I'm coming in with the second color and I'm just going to dab the excess off and then go back over that same color while it's wet. So it kind of blends a little bit but still stands out and gives it some dimension. The lampshades I got from Lowe's and they were on clearance. I got so lucky because lampshades are usually super expensive. It was about $22 for the pair of these lampshades. The final look of these lamps was so beautiful. I am extremely happy with how they turned out. They're not exactly like the originals but they are so close and the price you cannot beat. $46 for the pair of these lamps compared to $464 for the pair of lamps from Pottery Barn that you see right here. These lamps were even on sale at that price. I'm just amazed. <laughs> I love Pottery Barn, but I like to do the look for less. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you think I did in the comments down below. And don't forget to head over to Yami's channel and check out the playlist.